Are you looking for ideas to use your 6x6 pattern paper packs? Today's ideas work for many paper pads and any occasion. Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm going to help you make the most of your crafty supplies and time. So let's get making. Today I have the P13 6x6 paper pad called Forest Tea Party. And P13 is a great company if you like pattern paper because not only do they have like really gorgeous patterns, they have on the front and back cover, they've printed different like designs that you can cut out and use as embellishments on your card. So rather than just throwing away the front and back of the paper pads, they become embellishments that coordinate perfectly. They also have sheets inside of the paper pack that can be cut apart and feature little designs. These could be like journaling cards if you were doing scrapbooking because I believe they still have everything in 12 by 12 as well, but they work great for card making. They are a reasonable size. So I like to cut those apart and I have fussy cut out all of the designs on the front and back cover. You can use your scan and cut and I have used it before to cut out the designs, but I will say my scan and cut does not work quite as well without black lines. So like, like if you, you know, if you stamp something in a traditional way, you stamp with a black outline and color it in, the scan and cut does much better with those. Whereas these have, you know, just colored lines. And so that is, they can be a little bit tricky. I do share some tips in another video. I'll link that. But the, especially in this paper pad, there wasn't too many of them. So I thought fussy cutting would be less of a hassle. When I start to use a six by six paper pad. I usually go to my sketch binder. So that's what you're seeing here. This entire, I think it's like a one inch binder is full of sketches that I have created and cutting templates that are available over at JessCrafts.com as PDFs that you can print out. And then it tells you exactly how to cut your six by six paper and then how to assemble it with a coordinating sketch. Some of the cutting templates have multiple sketches to go with them as well, and I'll share two of those today so that you can get an idea for how, if you maybe don't like one of the designs, you can still use the templates. I look at a specific pattern paper, and then I try to find a sketch that I think goes well with it. I then take the sketch out of my binder, and I put it in these eight and a half by 11 plastic envelopes with the pattern paper and then this will help me as I continue throughout the process so that when I cut the mats if it requires mats then I can put those in there I can when I cut up the, the pieces of pattern paper it can go in there the card bases etc etc so this helps me to keep really organized but the first step is always picking the pattern paper to go with the sketch now some of my sorry, most of my sketches make for my six by six, make two cards. I have lots of different sizes, six by eight, 12 by 12. I make different size cards. Today I'm just making A2 and I'm using six by six paper. And usually they make two cards, but sometimes they make three or four. And in this instance, I decided to pick some that made four cards. I don't usually do this and I tend to prefer sketches that make two cards because if you're like me, you really enjoy buying pattern paper and using it, but you don't need to make four cards for every sheet of six by six pattern paper in your collection because that would probably be a ridiculous amount of cards. And so I do the same thing when I do 12 by 12, rather than making like 12 cards with one sheet of 12 by 12 paper, which you certainly could, I instead try to keep it down to like six cards so that you're not making a massive number of cards. However, today with this P13 paper pad, because there are so many cut aparts and embellishments from the covers, I knew I was going to need to make a lot of cards in order to use up all of those embellishments. And that is why I am making 56 cards with one 24 sheet pack of pattern paper. I would not do this all the time. I would generally probably tend towards less. You also might be thinking, what do you do with 56 cards? Do you have 56 people to send them to? I donate a lot of my cards, which you know if you've watched my channel before, and 
I know that a lot of people, a lot of other card makers would enjoy spreading the love of card making. And so on JessCrafts.com, where you can find all of these templates and download them as PDFs, you can also find links to all kinds of places where you can donate your cards. Now, here I'm moving into the card making process. I have taken my template sitting there on the right of my uh, paper trimmer and it tells me how to cut my sheet of six by six pattern paper. And the sketch next to it tells me how to cut my mats if the sketch calls for mats. My sketches usually do. I usually like to use a quarter inch mat, so you'll see that a lot of the time, but each sketch will be very specific in telling you exactly what you need to cut. When I do a six by six pattern paper tutorial, I like to do some little time saving things. One of them is picking out everything ahead of time, keeping it super organized so that I don't lose track of what my intentions were. But another important thing is if I can, I like to choose one color of cardstock that could work as the mats for all of the pattern paper. This isn't always possible. However, with this P13 paper pad, and this works often with companies that make a, have like a little bit more of a vintage look to their pattern papers, craft cardstock usually looks, works really well. So then I'll make all my mats with craft cardstock today and all my card bases will be white. Now, you of course can use this as an opportunity to use up cardstock that you have a lot of, um, or you can pick a special unique bit of pattern paper for each, or sorry, uh, cardstock for each of them. And, but I'm just trying to keep it simple. Here you see another organization that you probably do not need to do because you're probably just making cards because you like to and um, it inspires you, or sorry, it, um, it just makes you happy. However, because I do like to share these templates and tutorials with you, I make these YouTube videos and I also make Instagram reels, which are just like really short videos, really sped up versions of these tutorials. And so when I keep things organized, I actually set aside a whole card's worth of material in a bag labeled for YouTube and in a bag labeled for Instagram so that I can be as clear as possible in my demonstrations. But I thought it might be interesting to see that sneak peek because I know that not everyone is going to need that level of like organization and that, that process behind there, but to see what it takes to try to put together a video like this. Um, so here I'm working on my first sketch. I picked five sketches and templates from the like 38 that are available over on JessCrafts.com. And I'm going to make, like I said, 56 cards. I have template number two right here. All of the templates will be linked in a coordinating blog post. You'll get to see still pictures of all the cards. The templates have all the measurements that you need. But I'm working on card number one, and I'm going to make eight of it. It's template number two. I am using a piece of pattern paper that is really bold, and I am stamping a sentiment in the corner, and it allows that to be completely finished. I don't need to add any embellishments to that because that pattern paper has such a pretty corner to it. And the pattern paper actually has two of those. So I was able to cut it in half and that's why I picked out template two to go with it. Um, because there are so many different templates, you should be able to make it work with whatever pattern paper you have. In terms of time saving, I picked out a sentiment from Newton's Nook it is from their Loads of Bloom stamp set. And it has a saying of about, uh, may your days be filled with beauty. So it's like flower related. I picked it out to go with the deer, that very specific paper, that very specific sketch. But before putting it away, I'm going to take a beat and think, will I be able to use this sentiment somewhere else down the line? I have all of these cut aparts. And... I'm like, well, does, do any of them fit this sentiment as well or make sense with this? And so then I stopped and I stamped a bunch of the cut aparts with that same sentiment. So that way, when I went to use those cut aparts later on in my card making process, they would already be finished and ready to go. Similarly, 
I had a hello sentiment that I used for the other side of the pattern paper, which again, you'll be able to see in the still pictures on the blog. I used that little tiny hello to embellish some of the cut aparts as well. So that way I am not having to go back and pick out a new sentiment or um, spend time searching through my stamp sets for something that will work. I was like, well, if this hello was good enough for some of my cards, can I figure out how to use it on the other ones or if this larger sentiment is good for some of them? This is sketch number five. And again, cut out according to the directions. This one, you're tucking the strips underneath that larger panel. So you don't have to be as precise with the mat, for instance. This might be a good time to use up a scrap that's close enough because so much of it is covered. But here you can also see, and I've done this on a few of the cards and will usually and do this a lot throughout my card making process. Because part of that large panel is going to be layered on top of the strips behind it, but some of it is not. I want it to appear all pretty even. And so I decided to add a little bit of cardstock behind it. And I do that often. If I am going to be, um, I want to keep everything nice and flat as a layer. And so if I'm going to be laying it partly on something and partly off, I just add that cardstock to compensate. I also use a double layer of scrap cardstock for foam tape. So you'll see me adding that here behind this deer cut apart. I will also make sure that it lays nice and flat by adding a little bit of extra or even adding some dimension with extra layers of cardstock without getting into adding foam to everything, just because that can get kind of expensive over time when you're making a lot of cards. And I'd rather use my cardstock scraps. Again, I'm using that hello sentiment because I'd already picked it out for a previous card. So I'm just gonna let it sit on my desk. And when, I, when it comes up, I have that there just sitting there without putting it away. But also I did go through and think about are any of my other little cut aparts gonna use it and did that in a like sort of lump some kind of way. Next up, I have template number 36. Template number 36 has two sketches. This one is designed to work with six by six pattern paper that has a three by four journaling card on it. And I show you one version of the sketch that features the three by four journaling card and one that uses the three by four piece in a less prominent way. So the first one, you're gonna actually cover part of the three by four. And that was, it's actually sketch B, but I showed it first. And then here's sketch A, which features the three by four card. This particular pattern paper pack did not have any three by four cut aparts, but I still had this pattern paper where I really wanted to just feature the beautiful pattern paper. And so cutting a three by four chunk and making it the focal point of the card worked out excellent. And I actually only just stamped a little sentiment on it and I didn't embellish it because, didn't embellish it because it was so pretty. And so there's just that little tiny hello gonna be stamped in there. And then that extra three by two piece, I cut it in half and spread it out and left that gap and I covered it with the three by four card. The sketch, when you see it, it gives you some little extra directions to explain explicitly how I am accomplishing that. This one is sketch number 17. Sketch number 17 is incredibly simple. It makes a lot of cards and it leaves a lot of white space. So it's not for everyone. Not everyone likes this much white space. However, it can, it works well with single-sided paper if that is what you're working with. And it works good with, it works well with um, designs that are really small scale. It doesn't work so well with large scale designs, but here, I knew that while the other side of this pattern paper had these really adorable little critters in teacups, I needed a I needed a sketch and a design that would allow me to feature a lot of my cut aparts and a lot of the die cut cutouts from the pattern paper. So I decided to just use the wood grain side of the pattern paper and make all of these cards. Later on in the video, I'm gonna show you an idea for what you can do if you don't like all of that plain white space. And there I also do um, corner punch. 
And technically, I guess that's a scrap because all of these are no scrap designs. And I probably should have mentioned that earlier because that's like the big thing um, with them is that once I have cut all of these and used these sketches, I don't have any pattern paper left. I'm, I'm using every inch of every piece of pattern paper in these designs. Yes, sometimes I'm covering it up partially, but there's still not going to be any little tiny pieces of pattern paper that you have to worry about going forward. This is sketch number 27, and this also has two designs. This one, the particularly sketch A of it, is a little bit finicky because it has an eighth of an inch border. And what I've noticed about P13 paper pads and several others, and I'm not holding this against the pattern paper company in any way, but it is not precisely six by six. It is a little bit larger on one side at least. And so if you have quarter inch borders, usually it's not a big deal that it's maybe like a 16th of an inch bigger. However, if you're doing eighth inch borders, that 16th of an inch becomes that much more visible. So that's why I tend towards the quarter inch borders. It gives me a little bit more like freedom and wiggle room. And um, I, don't, I don't like to be fussy if I don't have to be. And so here particularly, that's when you'll notice it. And you may have to make sure if you're going to, if you prefer also eighth inch borders, most of my designs could be made with them if that's the size you like, if you like a smaller mat. But then I would really recommend you make sure that the pattern paper you're working with has the precise six inches or the precise measurements for each piece that you're cutting. The sketch B, which uses those same cut pieces and also makes four cards because the sketch makes four cards. And again, that is so that I can use as many of the embellishments and cut aparts as there are because this collection does have so many and I am again one side of the paper is a really beautiful big bold floral and then the other side is this darker fern sort of base thing uh, or base pattern and I have decided to use a lot of the darker side even though that floral is so pretty because it's going to make my die cuts pop off of it a lot more with that darker color. And because the scale is a little bit more appropriate to these smaller pieces. Ultimately, I do decide that even though these strips are very tiny, I am going to use some of that bolder pattern paper and I think that it works. But that is always something I consider. So if you're using up a pattern paper pad and you don't know you know, maybe you're picking a different P13 paper pad or you don't want to make as many cards as me, so you want to pick some other ones. When you're going through and picking sketches, and I do recommend printing them out and having them in a book to flip through, I think that that is super, super helpful. I love being able to flip through all of my designs and, you know, combine them. Add in the sketches, like MFT, my favorite things, has so many awesome sketches. Um... There's so many out there. I think paper players. And if you're also a fan of Christy Marcotte's channel, she uses a lot of different sketches from a lot of different companies. And then there's um, there's another YouTuber who does a sheet load of cards. I'm so sorry. I can't remember her name off the top of my head right now. Cra Crafty Al. She, you know, put them all in together. And then flip through them so that you can um, pick out your sketches. Think about scale. If you're gonna cut teeny tiny little pieces of paper, you don't want big bold patterns. Here, I was stamping the stamp and it was brand new. So I was not getting a great impression because a brand new stamp sometimes has like coating on it. And I use this tool from Debbie at Stamper Secret. It's really just a piece of leather attached to a handle and it really makes a difference. You see when I held it up to the camera, one of them was a much more solid, image and one was a little bit more splotchy so it's a great way to condition your stamps but again it's just a piece of leather on a um a handle so you could just use a piece of leather but i like her tool is really pretty and i like being able to support another crafter i like being able to have a convenient pretty tool on my desk but also i hear that um rubber like a rubber eraser works well for that too so 
Um, if you have trouble with new stamps not stamping perfectly, I would suggest trying one of the methods that are out there, including looking into Debbie's tool because it's just really cute. Anyway, I'm showing you an alternate way that I did sketch B. So I had done it on a plain card stock or card base, which I cut all my own card bases. I have a video that shares how I make my own card bases, but I know some people don't like the amount of white space that is left in these simpler sketches that use these smaller pieces. So what I did was I embossed my card base. This is a Spellbinders embossing folder. I really like Spellbinders new, I think they're six by nine embossing folders because they work for a large variety of cards. I can use them with A2, 5x7, slimline, mini slimline, etc. And it's big enough to, to work with all of them instead of like a folder that's just 5x7 will first off barely fit your 5x7 card and it won't work with your slim lines. And maybe you never make slim lines and that's fine, but I just like that I can buy this these folders and just know they will work for whatever design because I just I like to have fun and make different sizes of cards. So this sketch calls for you to cut those strips and then stretch them across the card and cover the gap with the two by three square that or two by three rectangle that is also called for in the cutting template. And I like that little extra look of embossing, but it certainly does add some time to your process. Here I'm showing you how I am, I've shared all five card designs at this point. And again, go over to the blog to get still pictures and see each design and get a link to every PDF to download and add to your binder. But here, I'm just gonna show you some extras of how I embellish and what kinds of things that I find helpful to finish off the sheer number of cards that I am creating. Stamps can be great, but sometimes, like for the instance of this uh, cut apart here that's a black background, stamping right on it is not going to work very well. So I could cut apart a banner. I think, I'm sorry, I could die cut a banner and add that on top. However, something that's really nice are these paper rose pre-printed sentiments. And Simon Says Stamp has some of these pre-printed sentiments as well, and I have them in my collection, but I just reached for the paper rose ones today. And it will allow you, they have usually black on white and then white, so black writing on white background or white writing on a black background. And it can save you a lot of time in terms of just being able to snip apart the sentiments. And so that's one thing that I like to do. There's also stamp sets out there that stamp a bunch of sentiments at one time and cut a bunch of sentiments at one time because the dies are attached. Those are great too. I featured those in some other six by six paper pad tutorials. If you are liking this six by six paper pad tutorial, be sure to subscribe because I do a lot of these. But also, there's plenty that are already available. I've done P13 paper pads before. I've done Doodlebug. I've done Authentique. I don't think... I mean, there are some particular collections that I'm not a fan of. But I love all kinds of styles of pattern paper. I love vintage. I love cutesy. I... yeah. I'm willing to just like whatever appeals to me in the moment. I will get. But it did make me wonder, what is your favorite pattern paper company? Maybe I haven't heard of them and it might be nice to discover them. This is a Polish company actually too. So this might be nice if you are outside of the US it might be a little bit easier for you to source if you're like in the EU. Here, this particular cut apart had the words time for tea under the teacups. I didn't want to use that. I could have covered it with a banner die or one of those pre-printed sentiments. However, the back was a pretty similar design, so I just cut the time for tea off and flipped it, and then I used that instead. If you found this video inspiring, here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know you like this video with a share to your crafty community. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next template or tutorial, and check the video description for product links. See you in the next video.